Hello, and welcome to For the Love of Animals. I'm Darlene Pickford, Hello. and we've got another great show for you. I'm Greg Bauer, and we've got our little friend Wicket here. Yes. And um, I want to tell the viewers about a couple of upcoming shows. Okay. Uh, one dealing with the history of the dog, and Ooh, maybe good. sometime the history of the cat, too. You never know. All and right. then also about uh, cat behavior. Okay. Oh, uh, we're just all kinds of interesting topics that we can find uh, to talk about here. We never run out of them. So, no, we but don't. But you said, Darlene, we have an interesting show today. So what, what's up now? We're going to learn or get tips on how to train your dog. Oh, Now, okay. Wicket, I want you to perk up and listen, okay? <laughs> how to train your dog. So introduce our expert oh, today, Greg. I'll be more than happy to. Our guest today is Sally Moore, who is a... Uh, uh, dog trainer and breeder from uh, the Paducah area here. And I think you brought a guest with you today too, Sally. I did. I brought our oldest dog. It's a yellow lab, female. It's Ashes. She's ten and a half. Okay. And we have uh, three others at home. <laughs> and oh, really? Oh, yes. They're all labs. We have a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a 13-week-old. Okay. How do they all, how do you manage? Do, do you have a 5,000 square foot house? No, or? no, but they're very well behaved. I, I've noticed, I was so impressed with Ashes in the studio. They know, you know, games to play in the house and games to play out of the house. Mm -hmm. okay. There's two separate games. So there's indoor behavior and outdoor behavior. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And they all get along and do mm -hmm. great. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I don't know that I would be, I could manage for, I guess I could learn and that with all the tips yeah. I'm gonna get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you get into this love of dogs area? I had dogs growing up. Um, my dad had bird dogs and was a hunter and I was always around dogs and just enjoyed teaching them to stand and to dance and to twirl and tricks. Mm -hmm. And I just really enjoyed dogs. So as I got older then and had a child and once he started school, I decided I wanted something to do and went to the dogs, so we still speak. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I feel very fortunate that I get to, to work with them on a daily basis. It's, it's, a, uh -huh. it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. Oh, it's oh. work. You know, yeah. some people say, "Well, you're so lucky to get to play with dogs all day." Uh -huh. Oh, well, wait, no, I, no, it no. is it's work. Play, but it is work. Mm -hmm. You know, but if it's, if it's uh, done right. 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 Well, that's I the have, key thing. Most of my adult life, I have had, uh, you know, a little dog, usually indoor indoor dog. But uh, but when it comes to training, I'm going to start off with this. Okay. How do you housebreak a dog? Housebreaking a dog. <laughs> I like to use a crate to housebreak with. Okay. I think it's a good way to go. Um, not that you should go off and leave a dog in a crate 10, 12, that's ridiculous, but mm -hmm. um, dogs as a rule will not soil their crate because that's their bedding area. Right. And you okay. want to start with a small crate okay. first, depending on the breed. Um, even a lab, I'll start with a smaller crate and work up. So they've got room to stand up, turn around, lay down, that kind of stuff, but they couldn't go to one end and use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You want to offer the bathroom to them. I like to use a bathroom term. I use go hurry. Okay. You can use any term you want to. Go potty, do your business, take a break, whatever you want to use. Mm -hmm. um, I take them out the same door, and I take them to the same location, and I start puppies on a leash. Oh, same door, same, same location. Same location. So you're going to teach them where you want them to go mm -hmm. in your yard. Um, and I always give them the treat outside when they use the bathroom. A lot mm -hmm. of people want to bring them back in and give them the treat. Well, they soon figure out quicker I get in, quicker I get the treat. So <laughs> oh, maybe they'll finish their business. Uh -huh. Okay. So I always give the treat outside. And um, monitor your food and water intake at the, towards the end of the day. And ideally, after a dog eats, it's going to have to go have to go poop. Right. Um, so then at night, I make sure I feed puppies by five between five and six o'clock. Water intake. I usually go to bed when I've got a puppy around eleven, eleven thirty. So by eight thirty, nine o'clock, water's coming up. Because if it's constantly going in, it's right. constantly coming out. Mm -hmm. If I find where they've gone to the bathroom in the house. Oh, yeah, that, you were reading my mind. What do you, how do you Even manage? if you didn't catch them in the act, they know they did that. Okay. So I will take them back to it. I don't rub noses. I don't spank. I don't do any of that. But I'll say, you see that? Uh-uh, what a bad boy. You don't do that in the house. That's ugly. You hurry outside. And if it's pee, I'll sop it up. If it's poop, I'll pick it up. And I'm going to take that with me in the whole way to the door. Uh-uh, oh, it's a bad boy. You potty outside. You hurry outside. You whatever term you're going to use. It doesn't matter. Okay. As soon as I get outside, 
What a good boy. Let's go hurry outside. That is so good. I take that paper towel and I put it down in that area, remember? Okay. Mm -hmm. where, I wanted, where you want them to go. So I'm going to show him the alternative. And he'll say, well, I like that Sally outside a whole lot more than that one inside. Well, I like your pee pee outside better too. <laughs> Works for me. And I'll give him a treat even if he doesn't go again. He's probably not going to. He's already gone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to really make it ultra positive how good that is to go outside. Mm -hmm. Usually in two weeks I can have a dog house broken. Okay. Okay, so in other words, if they do make a mistake in the house, you take them to, take it, them to it, reprimand them verbally, rep verbally, verbally and pick it up, sop it up, whichever it is, with a whatever, you take and go out that same and door. And lead them to the same door. Same and, and once you get outside, your tone turns to... What a good boy. That's where you go hurry outside. You gotta let them read your voice and your mood. Absolutely. And then I'll give them a treat. See, one of the things that people, I think, um, the language that you're using is though you would talk to uh, a child or an adult. Absolutely. And it's people need to thing. realize that the animals understand that, that language also. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They understand a lot more than we you, think they you do. You don't have to do something special for them. No, you know, if I, when I'm talking to a dog, I'll use a different inflection in my voice. I don't have uh -huh. to turn up the volume. Right. They can hear. Yeah. But what a good boy. Uh -uh -uh. So I'm going to use a different inflection to let them know I'm happy, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in other words, the inflection in the voice rather than raising the volume. Or absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We know a lot, of, a lot of people work they don't have the time. They get uh, frustrated. So what's the first thing you do? You yell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And so that's not good. No. I, I mean, I, it doesn't work for me. I don't like to be yelled at, so therefore I don't yell at my dogs. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion of that. I'd like to treat them the way I would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So I don't slap, I don't yell, I don't kick. Gotcha. I don't think that's a training method. And that's just what's worked for me over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Another problem I know dogs have is unnecessary barking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any helps on how do you train your dog? Well, it's like, how do you train them when to bark and when not to bark? I just teach mine not to bark, period. Okay. So you don't get into that issue. But it all goes back to that control again. Okay. Because nine times out of ten, they're barking because somebody's at your door. They're right. barking because a dog went by their house. Hey, mm -hmm. see that dog? That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if our kids said, hey, hey, somebody's at the door. Come here, come here, come here. Wouldn't you stop and correct your child and say, honey, that's enough. But right. we think our dogs, well, that's just part of being a dog. They just bark. When actually, okay. that's not the case. So you could go get them and kind of scruff of the neck verbally. Scruff of the neck. Okay, mm -hmm. like that. Quiet, no bark. And do that dog talk again. When somebody's at the door and the doorbell's mm -hmm. ringing. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll you can also, stage it. Yeah, absolutely get people to help you. I'll teach a dog place. And that's where you, they go to a position and lay down. Well, okay. I'll let them know when somebody knocks on that door, you need to go place and put it down, which is what Ashes is doing now. She's okay. on her place. And okay. so, you know what? That's not your job to answer the door. You are quite capable of that. Mm -hmm. See? So okay. take that job away from them. They think it's their job. I've got to let you know. They're protecting somebody you. They're letting you know, yeah, all this stuff that's going on. I'll be the leader and you follow me when that's backwards. And, and I think, isn't it probably also true that you can teach a dog this at any age? Just because they've done it for like 10 years doesn't mean they can't learn not to. Well, I yeah. think it'd be harder, It's though. harder because yeah, it's harder, you have to reprogram. Sure. Well, okay. It would be like somebody telling someone they couldn't do something they've done for 10 years. Oh, yes. Okay. Can't yeah. eat sweets. If somebody told me I couldn't eat sweets, I'd be in trouble. I mean, if you, <laughs> well, if you told me trouble. I couldn't have chocolate, you would really be in trouble. So we wouldn't just, we wouldn't be real complacent and say, oh, okay, that's fine. So we put up a little resistance. That's what your older dogs do. Mm -hmm. Not to say you can't teach them. I had a shepherd several years ago that was definite about going to that door and barking and it hitting the glass. And mm -hmm. I turned her around, but I taught her to place. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it took time because you're reprogramming. A puppy, like this 13 week old I have, he doesn't know any different. No, that's the way no. he's being brought up. Is that's that's rude. Even in his in his kennel, when he's in his run at the kennel, I don't want that barking dog. Mm -hmm. Quiet, no bark. Okay. I agree. Well, I tell wow. you, we are just getting to, off to an awfully oh, good yes, start I've got on some this. And good learning. guidelines for housebreaking a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we need to take a break and right. um, want to hear about a happy tale. This time about a cat named Callie, and. Um, Sweet little cat, but ornery. <laughs> She's a mountain she goat. <laughs> uh, you, you viewers will enjoy this story. Give a listen. Callie is a nine-year-old female cat with beautiful calico markings. 
We found her in Metropolis through the Project Hope No Kill Shelter as a case of animal abuse. A group of kids were using her as a football and drop kicking her for fun. Someone complained and unfortunately those responsible for the abuse were never prosecuted. Darlene and Greg decided to foster her but it soon became obvious that she would join our fur family. She is a very laid back cat except when a vase of flowers becomes evident. Then, in a flash, she is by the vase trying to chew on the flowers. She loves a treat on the counter such as a little bit of salmon juice and gets along well with the other cats in the house. The name Callie means goddess of mischief and she truly lives up to her name. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that uh, little tale about Callie. She had a pretty rough beginning, yeah, she but uh, she's a wonderful cat now, and all recovered, and just a, a real sweet little uh, animal most of most the time. Of the time. <laughs> I can't have a flower in the house. It can be up six feet tall, and Callie will find a way to get to it. <laughs> she is a true mountain goat, I tell you, but oh. a lovable mountain goat. Yeah, yeah. Well, our guest this afternoon is Sally Moore, who is a uh, dog trainer and breeder here from the Paducah area, and we're talking about uh, training your dog. And uh, let, let's move on to the next thing. We've talked about a number of different things already, potty training, that sort of thing. What do we want to hit next, Darlene? Biting. Oh, yes. How do we train a biting. dog not, not to bite? First thing I do about biting is I have no squeaky toys in my home. Oh. Because when a dog bites, a puppy bites, it squeaks. Cause right. and effect, cause and effect. Okay, then they come up to us and we go, ah! There's our squeaker. Okay. So there's some really neat squeaker toys that are out there now. They've got some really cool oh, toys. Oh, he loves his, <laughs> he yeah. loves them. Yeah, they're cool. So what I'll say, if it's fabric one, just cut, open it up, take the squeaker out. If it's a plastic one, just take a pen or a knife and puncture that squeaker so it won't squeak. Because it leads to this action. What are we doing now? Now we're coming up more biting on us. And particularly with children. With children, because they're litter mates. Especially the youngest. I'll usually say how many are in the family, the youngest one's gonna get picked on the most. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No tug of war, because mm -hmm. that leads to that hanging on and biting. Oh yes, See? yeah. Um, and then some of it is, is your breed. Your shepherds, your border collies, your herding breeds, your healers. They're supposed to herd and nip. Okay. That's their breed. So think about your breed before you get into this. Okay, well, well we're just going to expand on that. And by herding, you mean because you mean they use the nipping to help yes. help herd? Yes, mm -hmm. they sure do. I mean, blue healers and stuff, they, they herd cattle. All right, and so they do it by nipping and barking? Yes, they'll and bark and nip at their heels. And so mm -hmm. then okay. they get these kids and they, what do they do? They so bark and nip they, at their... That's right, they're trying to herd. You know, okay. I had a, a lady one time that she said, she, she had a dog and she said she keeps bringing sticks up to the back door. I just, how can I stop her? And I said, what do you have? And she said, a golden retriever. <laughs> so I said, slow that down just a minute. She said, golden retriever. I said, break it down, two words. Golden retriever. Mm -hmm. She says, everybody's <laughs> stupid as me. I said, no, <laughs> no, they're not. But that dog was doing what its instinct told it to do. Uh -huh. It's a retriever. Mm -hmm. Well, then you've got your herders. Then you've got your dobes, roddies, some of your shepherds. Their nature is to protect and mm -hmm. take care. Okay. Border collies, Pyrenees, they take care of the flock, remember? They, right. they watch the flock. Mm -hmm. So think about your breed before you bring it into this family and their characteristics and their personalities and is that gonna match with your family? Uh -huh. Well, suppose I have uh, young children in my family but yet we want a dog. What breed of dog would well, be the best? A Labrador, of course, you know. <laughs> I happen to be <laughs> oh, a Labrador. Of course. <laughs> um, labs are good, Goldens, Poodles. Yeah, there's a lot of good breeds out right. there. You, you just have to, if you're high energy, if you're, you know, boxers tend to be high energy dogs. Okay. Well, that's great for a family that gets out, hikes and goes. Your border collies, they're kind of high energy. Um, but you're going to teach your inside games and your outside games. Okay? So think mm -hmm. about that. Think about the size of your house. Think about the size of your yard. There's a whole lot that goes into picking that dog. There's some wonderful breeds out there. Some people want your smaller dogs. Um, think about the financial obligation mm -hmm. to this animal. Okay. You've got vet care. You may have grooming, depending yes. on the breed. That's an expense. Yes. Shih Tzus Food. have to be. Absolutely. So every six to eight weeks, he's got right. to be. Goes that's right. That's an groomer. expense. So think about how much grooming you really want to do, short-coated dog versus long-coated. Think about all that. It all comes into the big picture here. Uh -huh. And you're going to have this dog, hopefully, for years and years. You know, once you make a commitment, you have to remember, you chose that dog. Mm -hmm. That dog did not ask to come to your house. 
Now That's there's a responsibility true. and a commitment to that. So you gotta follow through with it. Sally, you've given us so many good tips. If people have other questions and so on that maybe we don't get covered today, how can they contact you? They can call me at Lodi Kennel. Okay. Okay. I'm in West Paducah. It's 270-488-3848. Okay. And please feel free. Okay. Ask another. questions. The only stupid questions are the ones we don't ask. <laughs> ask. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, okay. Well, um, what if I have an inside animal and I want to keep it off my furniture? I don't want it to dig on the sofa cushions and things like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back to the beginning again. Okay. And we people tend to pick them up and put them in our laps on That's the right, couch. That's right, we do. That's so right. we start that behavior. Try not to start that behavior, but let's say you get an older dog. Okay. Okay, and he's already been allowed on the furniture. You can take your collar and leash. Uh-uh, off. We're going to tell okay. him off. The minute he gets off the couch, the chair, treat him. What a good boy. Positive, negative. Everything's going to be based on positive and negative behavior. Mm -hmm. This I like, this I don't like. Um, there's a thing called a scat mat, too, that you can purchase from some of your catalogs. And it gets off a little tingly shock sensation. Not anything real bad, but when they jump up on, ooh, that's Doesn't unpleasant. And it won't make them scream. It wouldn't want that. And they'll immediately get down. But you have to do so that. So that's an idea. Easiest way is to start it from the beginning. From the beginning. We go back to that beginning in forming that pack order, that leadership, the do's and don'ts. Yeah. My dogs never get on the furniture. They don't even try because they don't know to because I never did do it with them. So mm -hmm. many of these behaviors, we show them. We, we've allowed. We say, oh, come here, we jump up on us. When, when they're 90 pounds, that's not very good, <laughs> is it? <laughs> so you just don't allow it from day one. So it goes back to that beginning. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it from the beginning, you've got an older dog that you've adopted, you just reprogram and help them through it. Any mm -hmm. tips on reprogramming other than just patience and? Lots of patience, lots of patience and try to read that dog because mm -hmm. sometimes they have a fear that they really think is legit. There really is a reason to be afraid of that. So help them through it. And what you can do is teach them to start trusting you. Well, if she says it okay, then it must be okay. But that takes time. Mm -hmm. Okay, it trust explain better. that. They may have fears we don't understand. They may be afraid of um, a vacuum. They may be afraid of the TV. They may be afraid of other dogs. Maybe they've been jumped by another dog. Oh, okay. And okay. That was a, so something that in their mind is unpleasant. We may not understand it, but in their mind, they think it's real. Bad weather. Wicked so, does not like uh, and some, lightning. Some dogs, weather-wise, they're like a barometer. Yes. We have some that we board, they bring medication. If there's a storm coming, we don't have to watch the weather. We can watch them. <laughs> they let us know. Um, so think about the fact that they may really think it's something to legitimately be afraid of. Mm -hmm. and help them work through it as long as yeah. you know it's okay. If I get a dog that backs away from something and I've got a little ceramic statue in my office and I've got one in front of the training building, ooh, you'll see dogs back away. So I'll use that. So I'll make them confront it and sniff it. And they'll go, oh, that's cool. That's not going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. So the more you do that, make them confront, instead of taking them away, okay. you're going to reinforce, oh, that's right, that is bad, get away from it, when mm -hmm. in fact it's not. Okay. So and help them. And it's also important to give them a positive reinforcement. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. For any time you make a correction or you do anything, come back and let them know that. I mm -hmm. do love you. I just didn't like that behavior. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most important things, I think. All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it works for us, doesn't well, it? Well, I was going to say, it, it, and it boils back down to the, uh, the thing of uh, treat your animal like they're another human being. Like they're a member of the family. They yeah. are. And they are a member of the family. Yeah. Hey, baby. And if it's the old golden rule. Hey, baby. They are. So. <laughs> Treat them as how you'd want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Exactly. Well, Plain we need to simple. take a, a quick break now and then take a look at another happy tale. And this one, <laughs> okay. as it turns out, he perks up now because okay. this happy tale is about Wicket. <laughs> Some of you have asked about okay. uh, a little bit about yes. him, so we thought we'd feature him with a happy tale today. So give a listen.
Wicked is a 12-year-old male Shizu. He came to Darlene and Greg in 2003 when he was about three years old. He was named after a Star Wars character because of his pointed ears, and we saw no reason to change his name when he came to live with us. Both of his previous owners had to give him up because of divorces. He lives with 10 cats and in general gets along quite well with all of them. We only had four cats when he came to us, and we told him that he had to get along with them. Since then, we have added six more cats, and it hasn't seemed to bother him a bit. He loves his squeaky toys and is very possessive of them. He loves to join the neighborhood dogs in a barking frenzy when he is on the screened-in porch. You viewers also know him as our mascot on the show, and Greg has nicknamed him Mr. Excitement because he puts his head down and goes to sleep on Greg's lap. That is, unless he hears the squeak squeak from a toy. Welcome back. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed that little extra information about Wicket this afternoon. He perked up when he heard his name. Yes, so, he uh, did. <laughs> uh, he, he liked what uh, we had to say about him. And he's, uh, anyway, he, our, he's our favorite dog. <laughs> our guest this afternoon is Sally Moore, who is a uh, local animal, uh, excuse me, dog trainer and breeder. And you've just been giving us a lot of wonderful ideas today about training your dog. And, and uh, so let's, let's get back to work. Let's How do I train a dog to walk on a leash properly? You know, I always start out with a what I call a free walk first. Okay. Um, and it's going to be on a loose, just a loose regular lead. Uh-huh. Um, and I start out with usually a, maybe a five-foot lead. You okay. You don't need a bunch of length. So I'll start out with a loose lead. A lot of people you'll see start out with. I know. Now, what does this teach a dog to do? Pull. There you go. Teaches them to pull. Okay. So will I put that on a puppy? No. Okay. I start with a regular leash first. As they get older and you want to give them some distance, that's a great tool. Okay. But starting out, oh, don't you want me to pull? Well, in fact, we don't. Okay. So I'll start out with a loose leash and they have a perimeter of me. They can go out to the end of that leash, but when they get to the end of it, I'll say, uh-oh, no pulls. Okay. When they come back in that, what a good girl, a good boy, I'll give them a treat. You don't be afraid to use treats. You know, make it worth their while. What's in it for me? I like her. She kisses myself. <laughs> so make it worth their while and make it positive. The number one thing I want to teach a dog when I first get started is learning is fun. And then okay. I want to teach them how to succeed and build confidence. When I get this leash, all my girls want to be first. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. They all want to go first. They love it. Okay. Instead of going, oh, she's got that leash. We don't want to do that. <laughs> well, that's not what you're wanting. So use those treats. You can use dog biscuits. You can use, sometimes I'll really up the ante and I'll use little bites of turkey dogs. People turkey dogs, I just cut them up. Or little bites of cheese, depending. German huh. shepherds love cheese. Seems to work. <laughs> okay. um, so I'll start with a loose lead and teaching them to check with me. And when I change directions, I just tell them, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then I might start working on a tighter actual heel position where they stay positioned on your left side. Uh -huh. But when I take a dog for a walk, I don't like to make them heel the whole time. That's work. Yes. Well, we don't yes. like to work all the time, do we? No. We want time off. So, but I delegate it. So there we go back to that leader again, the pack order thing. So I may start them out on heel and then I'll sit them and I'll tell them, okay, let's go. That releases them to go on out, but it's because I delegated it. But there we go you back allowed to the, them to. There we go back to that order again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a loose leash, but I controlled it. Okay. Mm -hmm. See? Uh-oh, put it down, baby. Lay down. Ashes, she is right here, babe. She is so good. She is a good girl. Damn. 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 With all the distractions, I just she's just remarkable. She's a good girl. <laughs> she is uh, a good girl. Uh, anything else about uh, advice about uh, walking on a leash? You know, just like I said, don't make it structured all the time. Uh, that's that's just no fun. The dogs will get to where they don't want to go. Once they get to where they understand, then you can go to something like a flexi to give them some more distance. They've okay. got different lengths of your flexies. And be sure you work with different collars. There's different equipment for training. Okay. You know, when I start with a baby, okay. I'll start with a flat collar. Okay. That's a good collar for a baby. Don't ever leave a collar on a dog unattended. You could put it in a crate, it could get hung on something, they could get choked. Mm -hmm. Um, don't leave two dogs with collars. Had a deal where there were two puppies playing. Look what happened. They came home, the one puppy was dead. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. And the other was hung on the collar. So don't leave collars on dogs. So that's a good one to start with. Supervised only. Put your collar on, attach a little leash to it, and away you go. There's also, um, this is called a martingale. 
and it starts introducing mm -hmm. a little bit of the chain collar with the flat collar. Okay. So that's when they get a little older and they start pulling, uh-uh, no pulls. So we're going to start reining in that pulling. You can still be at the end of the leash, but no pulling. There's choke collars, there's prong collars. You know, as they get older and you start getting into serious training, you've got to use the equipment that addresses that dog. If a dog is pulling and you're hearing, yeah, you're collapsing their trachea. Oh, That's yeah. damaging their neck. So you need to go with whatever collar is going to work. Over here, baby. Ash is right here. Sweetie, right here. Right here. <laughs> good girl. Sit. Uh. Very good girl. Uh-uh, sit. Nice. Good job, Steph. <laughs> Very good. Um, so you use the collar that's going to address that particular dog and what kind of corrections you're going to have to make. So you've got to be sure and think about your equipment and what okay. you're going to use. Well, i got a hard one for you now. Okay. <laughs> okay. How do you keep a dog from chasing cars? Well, we're going to go back to that control thing again. I keep going back to that. But that's yes, what it's you do. All, I do. That's what it's all about. Okay. If he can't get you know, in the road, he can't very well chase that car. I agree, but... And sometimes they'll chase it along the fence or that type of thing. And sometimes it depends on the breed. Some of your herding breeds, it's their instinct. They see that motion. Motion, And yeah. they want to chase it. Um, or maybe they're in a backyard and somebody's teased them and thrown rocks and stuff at them. You know, you can physically take a collar and leash, correct them for it. You can use an electric collar. And electric collars, it's a good tool. Sit, please. Sit. Excellent. Good job, sweetie. Um, it's a good tool used at the right place and time. You have to be very careful and teach with it before you start you, just... You, yeah, you need to know what you you're don't. doing. Yes, ma'am, you need to know. I wish they weren't so available, but anyway, they are. Um, so you could use that to make that a negative. Somehow you, you make that a negative, like I said, you use your collar and leash. No, no, no. No chase. Um, and then give them a treat. Come back to that treat thing. Make it worth their while. And try to keep that a controlled situation if you can. It's, it's a tough thing to address. And the longer it goes on, like any behavior, it's harder to break. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it, but it can be it corrected. Can be corrected. It, can be. it can be. It can be. It can be corrected. Just takes, takes time. Takes time. I, I can't believe we're already at that time. <laughs> oh, we've just barely gotten started <laughs> oh, with know, this. Oh, I know, with this wonderful information. Yeah. I know Sally, it's what one last thing quickly would you like our viewers to remember of what you said today? In training, in training your dog. You know, you've got to be consistent. You've got to teach before you correct. You cannot correct a dog if it hasn't been taught. Be consistent, be fair. You know, spend time with that dog. Mm -hmm. well, Good advice. Yes, absolutely. So I just can't believe it's worth the end. <laughs> I thought we just got started. It went, yeah. 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 yeah, it went back. There's a lot to this. Wicked, you were real good. Okay. So we, Sally, we'd like to thank you so much for spending time with us today. And thank you. We so know our viewers have gotten a lot of very good information. Darlene and I have gotten a lot of oh, awfully absolutely. good information, too. I, I have enjoyed it so very much. Education is the key. Yes. Thank People you so have much. Got to be educated. Yeah. Thank you. Well, so, in closing, I'm Darlene. I'm Greg, and we want our viewers to remember what we tell you every time. Give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Bye.